Hey guys, I'm Jason and this is Buy, Build, Sell. Today we're here at Fisk starting our foundation. The things we're gonna talk about today is survey, forming, foundation, and soil. Um, we were lucky enough to get our soils engineer here while we were filming so he can kind of briefly describe to you what we have to do and how we're doing it. But you're gonna get a pretty detailed, hopefully uh, in-depth experience as to what we're doing and how we do it and how we start a project from the beginning. Most people don't believe me, but the truth is, is I've been doing this for 11 years now and I started as a laborer. So yeah, I know how to work. You demo a house. How are you supposed to know where to put the house? So you build a brand new house. Who's telling you where to put it where? You just go based on a plan? Are you going based on your assumption of where the corner should be? Or, you know, oh, is it from the house next door? Is it from a tree location? What are you using to base that location off of? I'll tell you. We hire surveyors to come and actually geotag the locations so we know exactly where we're measuring from and they tell us exactly where our building corners are gonna be. I call it a building envelope. They come and they mark four corners of the property for me. So they give me my property corners and then they build, then they give me four corners that give me the envelope of the house. It doesn't necessarily mean it's giving me the exact location where to put my form. It's giving me five foot offsets on all four corners of the property. And if you can see, we have right here our string line, right? Which is dictating the that exact point, right? And it has those offsets right there. You'll see a stake. It says five foot building corner envelope, right? And it'll mark elevation locations for me. It'll mark a whole bunch of information to make sure that I'm placing my foundation exactly where it needs to go. Let's go check out the back. You're probably not wondering, but that's because you're not stepping over that gaping hole right in the middle. But uh, that location right there is for a future fireplace. Here's another example of those string lines giving us that building corner. You can see that the reason we call it an envelope is it's not actually the exact corner. It's giving us an envelope reference, which then allows us to measure from this envelope, however many feet going this way to get to the corner where we actually need it to be. We actually try to keep as many of the trees as possible from the existing property. A lot of the times you have to demo a lot of the trees that are on site, but we really try to keep as much as possible to keep the property looking as natural and existing as possible and give it more of a unique uh, distinction. Now what you're seeing here, that's how we test our elevation of the forms, how we test the elevation of the house. And we basically set up our elevation marker right there with that spinning laser. And that dictates to that machine right there where our, where our form is going to set. So on a project like this, this is what I call a production-based home. This is a really simple home. There's not that much uh, custom details going into the home. It's a standard build, uh, which means we're probably gonna be here for six to eight months at a maximum. Uh, that doesn't mean that the quality or the type of home won't be custom because everything I build is custom. The details in the home will be a custom finish. But it'll the floor plan is very similar to other houses I've built here. Uh, you know, a lot of the kind of questions that come up, there's really no questions because we built this house. I've built over 30 homes just in the Alphabet Streets, which is where we are right now. So it's not uncommon for me to just kind of be like, I know what I'm building here. We're gonna build it and it's just same kitchen, different detail, right? So uh, with these types of homes, there's not too much guessing going on. My favorite part about building is probably the process. Uh, everything from how to do things that we're doing to watching things be produced, meaning, you know, seeing a house, watching it go away, watching us build a form, watching us pour concrete, watching us 
frame, all of these elements, just every single stage of the game is just exciting for me. I, I always, you know, post a Instagram post saying this is my favorite part, but I, I, I'm not lying. It's just every stage ends up being my favorite part. So for me, uh, being an artist myself, watching production, watching how things are created and, uh, and genuinely creating is really my favorite part of the whole process. We are standing on a 5,200 square foot lot that I purchased for 2,175. The house was, I think, under a thousand square feet, about 900 something, uh, stood very low and was gone pretty quickly. It took about two days for us to demo, clear the lot, grade it, and get us ready for a surveyor. I'll take you through what we're doing right now to prepare for our footings and our foundation and kind of show you the steps that we're taking after foundation, after demo. You've seen, our, you've seen us demo Radcliffe and now you're gonna see us, see what those next steps look like here on Fisk. A little stats to go through. So this is a 5,200 square foot lot. It's gonna house a 3,400 square foot house on it with a five bedroom, I believe five and a half bath. It's a pretty standard white picket fence type home. You'll see the design on the billboard that we posted there so you can kind of see you know, what it'll look like. The expected exit price is just gonna be over $4 million. So look out for that coming up in about six to eight months, somewhere around there. Okay, let me take you through the project. So we spoke to an expert here, a soils, a soils engineer, Juan Vidal, about this project. Um, you're gonna be looking at this going, wow, that's really unique, this is huge footings. Um, the reason we're doing bigger footings here, we skipped a process called R&R, which is uh, removal and recompaction. What that does is it takes out dirt and recompacts the dirt to make it a solid base for footings. We skipped that process and went with a deeper footing process to just keep the project moving forward. So we're going deeper into the ground to get to a solid base. That way we don't have any issues with our foundation. And if you don't believe me, check out this video of Juan talking about it. Yeah, my name is Juan Vidal. I'm here to check the footing excavations to make sure that the depth and Spur plans, spur foundation plans, and make sure they're in competent materials. So once they build, they pour their footings at, and they build a house, that makes sure everything's good and they're not gonna have any settlement issues. But here, make sure that you're not an old fill and you're not native soils, and the native soils needs to be competent native soils, not poor soils that are prone to hydro consolidation, because then you'll have settlement. So you don't have any fill here and the footings look good. You don't see any porosity in the soils. The soils are all good, so. So the likelihood of my house falling down is it's very little. Okay. <laughs> so what we have is what we have here. I'll jump. Uh, I'll jump over into into this section here. So what I'm standing in right now is actually the garage. So we have a two by twelve form going around the whole entire property, mostly around the whole entire property. It can come around and bring us in. Right now. It doesn't really matter what the floor plan is because you can't tell, it's not built. But we're standing in the garage. Uh, we have a jog into the front entryway. So we'll have a nice little porch section here walking into our, our front door. Um, we have all of our trenches prepared for our plumbing. So you actually are going to see us connect our plumbing to our sewer line now. So we're not dealing with that later. There's very little light electrical work that has to be done during the foundation stage. Uh, we're only gonna be running one conduit from the side of the house to the island in the center of the kitchen. That's pretty much all we're really doing for our electrical work on this. What you're gonna see is we're gonna finish our forms, get our rebar done. Our soil has been tested, so we're approved for that. We're gonna get our rebar done. We'll get that approved, and we'll either do one or two options. Then we can do a monolithic pour or a two system pour. Sometimes we pour our footings first, then we prep our top, and, we, and then we pour our slab. I usually like to do a monolithic pour because it allows us to prepare everything in one shot, pour it in one shot, and we can get right into framing. It's a little bit of a faster method, but the first method can save you a little bit of money in concrete. Catch 22, right? Are you more interested in speed or more interested in cost? Uh, for me, I'm both. Don't question it. Efficient.